Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Macros are small programs that record your keystrokes as you perform a task and then save the actions that you have performed as a Visual Basic module, which is a type of program file. When you run the macro later on, it will repeat your keystrokes, thus repeating your actions. This is why they're great for automating repetitive tasks. For example, pretend that you wanted to place your name and your company information in the upper left cell of a worksheet. You could use a macro to record your keystrokes as you create at one time, and then run the macro in the future. It would repeat the exact same keystrokes that you have entered, effectively repeating the process instantaneously. While you can see advanced options for creating macros on the Developer tab in the ribbon if it is enabled, you can also use the Macros button group that appears on the View tab within the ribbon to record and playback basic macros that you record. In this lesson, we will examine how to record a basic macro using the commands found within this button group in the ribbon. So to begin to record a macro, you can click the Macros button that appears within the Macros button group on the View tab within the ribbon. From the drop-down menu that appears, select the Record Macro command. This will open the Record Macro dialog box. In the Record New Macro dialog box, enter a name for your new macro into the Macro Name text box. Note that macro names cannot contain spaces. Next, select the name of the workbook to which you want to attach the macro by selecting its name from the Store Macro In drop-down. If you do not change it, then it will default to saving the macro into the current workbook. This is important only because a macro can only be run if it is attached to an open workbook or if it is stored in the Personal Macro workbook, which we will discuss later. You can also create a custom keyboard shortcut to use in conjunction with the control key by typing the desired shortcut key into the text box that appears next to the control plus. If you decide to do this, make sure that you don't overwrite an existing shortcut. For example, the shortcut character of P would be a bad choice as control plus P is already a keyboard shortcut for the print command. If you aren't familiar with your keyboard shortcuts, then it may be better if you don't assign one. When you're ready to start recording your actions, click the OK button. While recording your macro, you cannot use your mouse very much, and you should minimize your mouse movements during the recording of the macro. Instead, try to use the keyboard as much as possible. Now once you have finished recording your macro, click the Macros drop-down button in the Macros button group on the View tab in the ribbon. Then select the Stop Recording command to stop recording the macro. Unlike macros and other Microsoft Office programs, in Excel the types of cell references that you make while recording a macro can be adjusted. For example, assume that when you began recording your macro, the active cell was cell A1, and from there you clicked into cell D1. When Excel records you doing that, it can either record that action as a relative reference or as an absolute reference. So that action, if recorded, 
using relative references would make the active cell move four cells to the right of whichever cell it happened to be in when you started to run the macro. If you recorded it in absolute terms, it would always move to cell D1 from wherever you start the macro. Note that you can adjust the types of cell references that are used when recording macros by clicking the Macros drop-down button in the Macros button group, and then choosing the Use Relative References command. By default, Excel macros will use absolute references. You can click this button to switch to relative cell referencing during your macro. You can then click it again to switch back to absolute referencing when needed or after you're done recording. Also remember that if you want to save a workbook that contains macros in Excel 2007 or later, you need to select the Excel Macro Enabled Workbook choice from the File Type drop-down within the Save As dialog box. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www dot teachucomp dot com forward slash free